guys, just a quick review of Power Book 3, Raising Kanan, Episode 3. So of course there'll be spoilers, so I recommend you watch the episode before watching this review. So yeah, I guess I'll start with the cop, I guess, with what was going on with him, the detective. So yeah, him and his partner, who's, I guess, new to the force, were trying to, I guess, catch a criminal. I think the one who was babysitting Kanan, you know, in the previous episode, like he basically escapes from the cops and they kind of lost the lead when he got away. And then we, we meet the captain, who I recognise from Hemlock Grove, who, who played that crazy scientist. I mean, I don't, know I, sh- I don't know if I should call him crazy, but some of the things he did, man. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he's an angry captain in, in this show, and I guess they get in trouble for losing leads, and it gets get to the point where they could be fired. And that kind of sucks for the, you know, the person who's new, because she doesn't want to get fired on her first, you know, time in the force. Mm-hmm. Like, she hasn't been there for that long, basically. She kind of gets mad at the detective as well. But then I guess they eventually stake out a lead that can, you know, actually put them back in the good books, which I guess that does work out for them. We kind of see at the end of the episode, they capture someone. Yeah. (laughs) It's kind of funny. The the guy in the car is kind of like singing this song. (laughs) But yeah, basically things kind of work out for them anyway. Even though one of them got away. Because can, cause Kenan kind of finds out what happened from him when, you know, he's babysitting him again. They even talk about, you know, Wiz, which, yeah, I guess we'll talk about Wiz from Kenan's perspective and how he's dealing with that. Because that was his friend. So, yeah, as, as the episode goes on, you can kind of tell that Kenan's having a hard time dealing with, you know, his friend's death. I mean, I'm not, I'm not even really sure what he's thinking because... They kind of mainly focus on other characters in this episode compared to Kanan. I mean, yeah, Kanan does get focused in this episode, but not as much as, like, the previous two episodes. They kind of try to focus on other characters, like the detective, more of the mum's story and the people she's meeting, like the new deal she's making with people, and I guess her new boyfriend, which we've, I guess, known since she met him in the club in episode one. Like, the same place as that white girl with her, with her dog, which I guess the uncle Marvin... Mark, Marvin, I always get mixed up which one you call him. Basically, he gets her a new dog because I guess they're getting closer and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, back to, you know, Kanan. Yeah, he's definitely having a hard time, you know, coping in, in this episode when it comes to, you know, his friend's death. And I don't know if he blames himself in a way. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to tell what, what he's thinking because they kind of focus more on a lot of other characters than Kanan in this episode. So we don't really get to truly see... You know, what he's thinking in this moment, is he wanting revenge? Is he just, I don't know, it's hard to know what he's thinking. But, you know, by the end of the episode, when they go to see, you know, his friend's mum, you know, it's just in tears. No one can't really do anything because it could make things worse. Yeah. I just, I'm just thinking like, because normally, like, he would just, even if he doesn't follow orders, I mean, even if he's supposed to follow orders, sorry. You know, he, he would probably just do it anyway. But that time when he killed Book 20, it's because he didn't know that his mum already set up a deal with them. But say if, she, say if he knew, would he actually still just do it anyway? Because they're just taking over their territory. I just don't know if Kenan would actually do that. But mm, I don't think he would, because he's li- he would listen to his mum, because he's still here because of his mum. Like, he could have had a better life. You know, if he didn't stay here with his mum. But yeah, it's what he chose to do. <clears throat> and I was seeing how things are. And speaking of people who are not really making good choices right now, let's talk about Jukebox. So yeah, Jukebox. I mean, I, I do like her relationship with, you know, that girl who she's seen. And she is trying to, you know, put Jukebox in a better light. But, you know, Jukebox is more loyal to her family. But then her family's, like, into crime stuff, so, you know, that kind of, you know, leads her down to what her life's going to be in power, the original show. And we all know how that goes. I mean, she does become a cop, so maybe a bit of... Maybe a bit of the goodness was still there when she first became a cop, but eventually she just became, like, a, you know, a woke cop and just did a lot of bad things and everything happened with Tariq <laughs> and Kanan, yeah. Then they're killing Tariq and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> With Kaylin having to put her down and stuff. Like, damn. <laughs> to seeing how she was, to then, you know, what she becomes. Like, man. I just know that, you know, this girl that she likes is going to get killed by the end of this 
sure or hell by the end of the season i think because we need to do we need to see how she becomes you know you know what she actually becomes in you know the original show because kanan does say that she's like the hardest person he's ever met and i haven't really seen that from her i mean we, we got to see a little bit in this episode when they're i guess robbing someone and she's nearly gonna stab someone because you know the person that she's working with gets a bit hostile, but yeah. <clears throat> We've not really seen much of her hard side, really. It's more like her innocent side, but I just know by the time the girlfriend dies, you know, she's gonna. We're probably gonna see more of her ruthless side, like in Power, the original show, yeah. Also, I like the kind of talk that she has with, her, you know, Kaden's mum. So yeah, this is probably my favourite scene of the episode. <laughs> yeah, we kind of get to see. Like how close it actually was because I guess you know Jukebox was kind of living under the same roof as you know Kaylin and the mother, but you know I guess she when she kind of moved out, I guess there wasn't as close like Kaylin, Kaylin's mom and her, because I guess they actually were pretty close, yeah, kind of like friends in a way, <laughs> or daughter should I say, yeah, <laughs> like they used to, they used to share everything together, like talk all night. They said, yeah, they were definitely close, but you know. The person that she's close to now is, you know, that girl. And, you know, Wok is also close with someone too, which I haven't really talked much about who she's seen. And they can have a connection, I guess, because we kind of see a lot of that through this episode, like, a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they kind of, like, bond with that in, you know, this scene. And it's definitely a really nice scene. All right, so we're going to finish up with talking about uh, Wok in this episode, because I guess she has most of the important scenes compared to all the other characters i mean i kind of forgot about you know kaden and when he's talking to you know that girl that he likes and you know like she, her asking like if she knew that you know d was the one who actually killed her boyfriend yeah that scene yeah like that's that was probably a hard scene for kaden because he knows the truth but he's also mourning for his friend so he just tried to answer the best he could without revealing too much i guess yeah <laughs> other than that like yeah let's talk about walk because yeah i guess she's getting really close with that person who she met at the club she kind of like kind of likes him because he's he's kind of like the life that she wish she actually had if she met someone who you know didn't keep her in this you know place because the original father got locked up and stuff and you know she was just left to fend for herself in this you know neighborhood and you know she just had to survive in this place really then she meets this guy like the perfect person that she wished she had and she says like it feels like a vacation when she's with him like she's not really you know in this lifestyle like it feels like a you know a getaway for her and for i guess the boyfriend it's like he can tell that she's been through so much and it's kind of like more of like being with someone who's have who has a lot of experience and wisdom, I guess. That's what he said in a way. Yeah. So that's why I guess they like each other. Yeah. <laughs> also, she kind of sets up a new connect as well. The uncle kind of does the same thing with that DJ, which I guess we'll talk more about him in the next episode because we're probably going to see him more too. Yeah. But yeah, I kind of recognise the guy from The Wire and The Walking Dead. You know, who plays as Bob in The Walking Dead. I can't remember in The Wire what he's called. Yeah, she kind of sets up like a thing with him. I'm not sure how much gets sorted out, but yeah. Because he can, like, the person who she's making a deal with can tell that, you know, she, she's kind of a bit hot right now because this guy kind of operates more silently. So, yeah. <laughs> we'll just see how that goes in the next episodes and how that connect works out. Because, because she, she kind of messes up things with the other connect because of, you know, what Kanan does. But yeah. <laughs> We'll see how that goes, and it's cool that we actually have him in the show now. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It was definitely a, a better episode than episode two. Can't wait to see the next episode. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.